Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. Last week, a new congresswoman, Rashida Tlaib, co-authored an op-ed calling for the impeachment of Donald Trump. That got a little bit of news. It was overshadowed just slightly by the language she used in talking about that. But the co-author of that piece, John Bonifaz, joins us now. John, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Very glad to have you here. So you're also the author of The Constitution Demands It, the case for the impeachment of Donald Trump. So this is a topic you have returned to a couple of times. And so we will appreciate your your insight into why he should be impeached. So in that op-ed, there's a quote that we already have overwhelming evidence that the president has committed impeachable offenses. For those who have been blissfully unaware of what's been going on for the past couple of years, what are some of the standout pieces of evidence? Yes, and just to clarify, I'm the co-author of that book, The Constitution Demands It with Ben Clements and Ron Fine at Free Speech for People. And what we have identified are 10 legal grounds, separate legal grounds to start impeachment proceedings against this president, starting with his violations of the foreign and domestic emoluments clauses of the Constitution. These are the anti-corruption provisions of the Constitution that require that a president not be engaged in for-profit business-making interests while he's serving in the Oval Office. This president refused to divest from his business interests around the world. He's been illegally taking foreign payments and financial benefits from foreign governments around the world, as well as from the federal and state governments in this country in violation of the domestic emoluments clause. So he's been treating the Oval Office as a profit-making enterprise at the public expense. And that was the first ground really for impeachment proceedings and why we launched this campaign with Roots Action, impeach Donald Trump now .org, the day of the inauguration. Since then, he's engaged in obstruction of justice, abuse of the pardon power, uh, dealing uh, with calling on law enforcement agencies, including his own Justice Department, to go after his political opponents. Uh, He's been found by federal prosecutors, his own Justice Department, as having directed a criminal conspiracy to pay, uh, make hush money payments to two women who allegedly had affairs with him and he wanted to cover it up to influence the 2016 election in violation of federal campaign finance laws. Uh, He has engaged in unconstitutional, cruel and unconstitutional imprisonment of children at the border, the southern border. These are violations of their due process and equal protection rights as well as their Eighth Amendment rights against cruel and unusual punishment. The list goes on and on and we do not need to wait for Robert Mueller's investigation to be completed before we can start impeachment proceedings against this president. So that's interesting because a lot of people seem to believe that if there is going to be a conversation about impeachment, it should wait for Robert Mueller to wrap up his investigation. But you lay out in the op-ed that there's a difference between the impeachment power that our elected officials hold and the criminal power of prosecution. Why is that important? Why is that distinction important in terms of convincing people that the Mueller investigation, while it might turn up additional reasons for impeachment, is not necessary to get that process started? Well, the framers were very clear that the impeachment power was there to protect the republic. When you have someone like this president, a lawless person in the Oval Office threatening the republic, threatening our constitution and our democracy, the remedy with impeachment is removal from office. And that is distinct and not the same as dealing with accountability in the criminal justice system. What Robert Mueller is focused on is whether or not Donald Trump or any of his associates committed crimes under the federal criminal code in coordination with the Russian government to influence the 2016 election and with respect to obstruction of justice. That's his focus. Uh, And that is a separate question as to whether or not this president has abused his power and abused the public trust. High crimes and misdemeanors does not relate uh, directly to any kind of question of federal criminal violations. And there's no requirement whatsoever in the Constitution that there be somehow a criminal indictment or a criminal conviction before starting impeachment proceedings. So what we have is overwhelming evidence today of abuse of power 
abuse of the public trust. It's been almost daily basis that this president engages in an impeachable offense. And waiting on the Robert Mueller investigation to be completed is misplaced. What Robert Mueller focuses on is whether or not there will be accountability in the criminal justice system. But what Congress must focus on is whether or not this president should be removed from office for having committed these abuses of power. I'd like to get your response to two of the counter arguments that I've heard from people who might on one level think that he deserves to be impeached or even wish to see him impeached, but don't think that we should pursue it right now. The political and sort of pragmatic reasons. So one is that hypothetically the House could impeach him, but the Senate is held by Republicans and they're unlikely to convict him. So I guess what would be the point? And the other argument is that it might hurt the Democrats chances in 2020 to do the divisive thing that is impeachment. How do you respond to those counter arguments? So on the first argument about whether or not there are the votes in the Senate to convict, it is far too premature to be making that assessment today. Congress has not even started impeachment proceedings. When it starts those impeachment proceedings, there will be evidence that comes forward for the public to see, for senators as well to see. And that may very well change the dynamic in the Senate. We have to remember that during the impeachment process, in the Watergate era, most Republicans were not with the impeachment process. Most Republicans stood by Richard Nixon almost to the very end. And in fact, a significant percentage, something like 30 plus percent of the American people still supported Richard Nixon, even when he took that helicopter ride out of the White House after having resigned. This is not a process that automatically gets the majority of the country behind impeachment. But the fact is we already see in polling upwards of 40 plus percent of the public ready to see the start of impeachment proceedings. And the educational process that takes place will sway others to come on board to recognize that this president is a threat to our republic. The other answer here is that we cannot engage in looking at the question of whether or not the Senate will convict as a way of not starting the impeachment process. The fact is that charges need to be laid out. That's the House of Representatives responsibility. And those charges are there to be made today with all the evidence that's come forward. And the Senate then must hold the trial uh, and the public will see how it plays out. And the public will be engaged at that point in having been educated about all these abuses of power. On the question of 2020, Really what people are saying when they say that we ought to just wait till the next election is they're putting party over country. Uh, They're effectively saying that, you know, we're going to allow this lawless president to remain in the Oval Office, the Constitution to be trampled on, the rule of law to be defied, and we'll just play this out as a political game until 2020. That is a very, very dangerous precedent to set for administrations going forward, and it's a threat to our Republic today. The reason why Donald Trump needs to face impeachment process today is he's a threat to our constitution and our democracy. And to leave him in the office without any kind of charges being issued and without trying to engage in addressing this threat is a danger really to our country. Well, John, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, breaking down uh, your, your view on the impeachment. Uh, perhaps, you know, if Rashida Tlaib is listened to in the House, we will end up finding out. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.